Hi, I'm Danny and I'm the Naples Camp Bow Behavior Buddies Dog Trainer and today I'm going to be starting a series of videos dedicated to the specific issue of dogs pulling on a leash um, or the way that I like to look at it, the specific behavior of loose leash walking. There's not a single behavior out there that has more attention and more tools designed specifically to address a specific issue than dogs pulling on a leash. Everybody wants to walk with their dogs. Everybody wants to have a nice dog that walks nicely on a leash. Unfortunately, until we teach them how to do that, dogs don't automatically know that you want that's what you want them to do. So I'm going to go through all the different tools and tell you what the best tool is that you can use to teach your dog to walk nicely on a leash. Like I said, this is going to be a multi-part video, but each week I am going to remind you what the best tool is. So first, I am going to talk about one of your more common, or two of your more common loose leash walking tools, and that would be your prong collar and your choke collar. Now these two collars are designed to cause your dog pain and discomfort when they pull on a leash. Your prong collar, as many people see, it's, it's the one that has the spikes that kind of dig into the, into the dog's neck when they pull. And your choke collar is your standard chain collar that when the dog pulls, it tightens around the neck and chokes them. The problem is, number one, I'm not a fan of any tool that has a potential to cause your dog pain and discomfort. Many avid users and pro prong and choke collar trainers will tell you that when used properly, that these devices do not hurt your dog. The problem is that when used properly, I don't like any tool that has the potential of causing my dog pain and discomfort. And on a sidebar, I usually hurt myself when I'm trying to put a prong collar on a dog. And if I'm hurting myself, it's just not good. So when the dog pulls, the prong and the choke collars tighten up on the dog's neck and cause them pain and discomfort. The other problem with this method is as soon as those tools are off, the dog knows it and the dog goes right back to pulling. In addition to that, if, the dog if your dog really wants to sniff that rock over there and all they have to do is deal with some pain and discomfort so they get to go sniff that rock, guess what? That rock, sniffing that rock is way more important to them and way more rewarding than the punishment from the pain and discomfort on their neck. So it's not really a great tool. Those aren't really great tools to use. They work. Absolutely. I'm not going to deny that they work when they are on the dog. But again, I don't like any method that may cause my dog pain and discomfort. So the best tool that you can use to teach your dog how to walk nicely on the leash is their mind. You can teach them that no matter how much they pull, they are not going to get to sniff that rock until they give you slack in the leash. And that is the most effective way to start teaching loose leash walking. Tune in next month to hear my next segment. Next month I'm going to be talking about gentle leaders and haunties, which are a great alternative to, adult, uh, to uh, prongs and chokes, but they do have their downfalls. Remember, your dog's mind is the best way to teach them how to walk nicely on a leash.